Hey Weather Warriors, hope you're having a great day. In this video, we're going to be talking about the potential for a massive Arctic outbreak, long duration, and the potential for our friend Polar Vortex to make a return after the 5th of February through mid-month. I'm also going to be talking about whether or not there'll be any big storms during this time period. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed educational weather forecast breakdowns just like this. Hit those bell notifications because these forecasts are hot off the press and the weather is always changing. So let's get right into it here. Our friend Fox has taken the dive into the snow and that's exactly what this pattern is gonna feel like here. A dive of cold air coming out of Canada. There's a lot of really cold air locked up in Western Canada right now with really high snowpack, dozens of feet up there and also down into Canada, but lots of cold air locked up there's going to be a pattern that will shunt this to the south and we'll go over that in a second we'll get this uh out of the way so our friends in the southwestern united states can see their weather here these are the probabilities by the cpc from the 8th through the 12th of february of below average or above average temperatures and you can see that you're generally forecasting below average temperatures here in the north and western and or excuse me the eastern two well, probably four-fifths of the United States with almost 100% up here in the northern plains. So very high confidence an Arctic outbreak is coming. In the southwestern United States, a slight to moderate chance above, of above average temperatures. The precipitation doesn't look quite as uh, daunting here, but you'll see above average precipitation potentially in the Rockies and the northern plains. The potential is there for multiple clippers to move through this region. We'll go over that in a second. We're going to look at the actual temperatures and storm track here in just a second. But southeastern United States could have some coastal systems that glide up along there south of that jet. And then the northeastern and western U.S. clocking in at below average precipitation. But we're also going to look at the potential for a nor'easter. We'll go over that in a second for the east coast. I'll give you my thoughts on that here in a second. But this map is key. This is right now. Notice this. This is the ridges and troughs. This is just below the jet stream. These areas in red, those are where your ridging is, and that's where typically you get your warm, dry conditions. Your troughs kind of where your cool and stormy conditions form. Your cold air is typically to the west of the trough, and uh, your storm systems will typically form just to the east here, okay? And sometimes you'll get clippers to ride down behind them. But that's kind of kind of something you want to watch here. Now, look out here. There's a ridge sitting off the coast, okay? There's a trough in the northwestern United States, a little tiny one. And there's a ridge out here in the east coast of Canada into central Canada. If this ridge moves to the east and strengthens, that's going to shunt this cold air westward. If this uh, ridge out here in the east coast of Canada moves inland and strengthens, this is gonna shunt this cold air south as well. So it's gonna kind of squeeze it. You can imagine these two ridges coming in, converging and squeezing this cold air. Another thing is this is gonna kind of block it in, from moving eastward. So you imagine your little troughs, they move west, they ride up, but because of this blocking here, it's gonna kind of rotate around into the United States. This could squeeze it and it could be strong enough if you imagine like squeezing kind of jello or something, sometimes you can split it in half and, and squeeze it. Well, that could potentially happen. And a piece of energy could squeeze and pull off and create a little uh, polar vortex that moves into the United States. We'll go over that in a second. So that's right now. But will it happen? Let's fast forward. This is Saturday at 7 p.m. Now, notice the difference here. This is a massive difference. So we'll go back to now and Saturday. Whoops. Now, Saturday. Now look at what just happened here, that ridging really building in, that ridging really building in. And you notice it's kind of moved just to the west a little bit too. There was troughing out here, but now the ridge has moved in. And that has sent a vault of cold air southward out of Canada. You can kind of see them squeezing it. So all that pressure is getting squeezed up there and you can kind of see it kind of, uh, you know, the, the balance change a little bit in the United States. So... Pretty cool little effect there. And the coldest air is typically going to be along and to the west of these troughs. So where you see those, those black lines go from the northwest to the southeast. That's where your coldest vault of cold air is going to be. It's going to take some time. So it's going to initially be up here. It's going to take some time for this to get, get dragged down. So even if it's blue down here, it will take some time. We'll go over that in a second. This is the snowpack right now, and you can see very healthy snowpack out here in eastern Canada and the northeastern United States. 
A decent snowpack here in the Midwest, not so much in the Northern Plains, but that could change. And then also a very decent snowpack in Canada and especially California here, where they got tons and tons of snow. But that could change here, so we'll look at that in a second. I don't think this is going to change for most people, except probably this area right here in the Northern Plains where they could add to their snowpack. And then uh, California might actually decrease their snowpack with the above average temperatures. This is uh, the precipitation forecast for uh, Thursday. So we're looking at Thursday now. There's a low, low pressure system. This is the first system we're going to want to track. Sprinkles out ahead of it and some snow behind it. Now, will this be a major system? Because you saw those crazy maps that I showed you. Will this be a major system? Well, in my experience, when you get a really crazy Arctic outbreak like this, sometimes it's kind of overkill and you won't get the strongest system. So I'm not forecasting a powerful system with this Arctic outbreak. This will be a quick mover as it moves from the plains to the northeastern United States, a couple few inches max with sprinkles and rain out ahead of it. But in my experience, these really fast moving big Arctic outbreaks, they kind of undercut the, the moisture potential dry and it, very fast moving systems. So I'm not expecting a blockbuster system with this, but we'll go uh, look at the actual temperatures anomalies. So this is uh, Thursday here. You can see temperatures near that low pressure system out ahead of it. There's going to be warm air that gets pulled north. That system's going to pull warm air initially out ahead of it, but behind it, it will cool off. So you can see the, the northern plains, a few degrees below average. There's going to be multiple surges. So you're going to see multiple clippers come out of the northern U.S. So this is the first surge. Won't be terribly strong, but will deliver some cool air and windy conditions. But it's that second and third surge that come out that will amplify more and more cold air and add it to the U.S. It'll make it colder for the northern U.S. and also make it more widespread as well. So we're going to go and look at the temperature of the wind chills here. And you can see on Thursday, the wind chills, look at that cold front it goes from 50s and 60s in the Texas panhandle up into the Oklahoma panhandle, only 20s. So very big temperature contrast, 40 degrees there. Warm out ahead of it, 50s and 60s. Again, temperatures, we're looking at the wind chills and heat indices for this video. You can see very cold out here in the east, but a temporary warm up is going to happen before the main surge happens behind it. But look at those temperatures up there, the wind chills. 30 degrees below zero up into Canada and even 10 degrees below zero up in the Dakotas. That is working its way south. Cold, cold air. As we head towards Saturday, look how this ridge or this troughing now moves in. But look at that ridge out there. It's starting to move a little bit eastward. That's going to allow this cold air to get shunted into the uh, central and uh, parts of northern U.S. here, mostly northern U.S. And you can see these little waves here. Each of these are different punches of this Arctic air mass. There's your first one coming out into the eastern United States. Won't be particularly strong, but a few degrees below average. Another one up here, and then there's going to be another one up here. So there's going to be a triple threat here. And eventually, the polar vortex might make its way south. We'll go over that in a second. On Saturday, here's your temperatures or your wind chills or the temperature anomalies. So how much above or below average? A few degrees above average for the southwestern United States with that first surge along and behind it. A few degrees, maybe up to 10 degrees below average for the east coast, midwest. But behind this second surge, you can see temperatures 20, 30, maybe even 40 degrees below average up here in central eastern Canada into the northern plains. So very, very cold here on Saturday. Snowpack won't change a whole heck of a lot, but you can see it's been added to in the Northern Plains and the Rockies just a bit. Again, these clippers with these little types of these Arctic outbreaks, not usually strong, just a couple of few inches usually with the uh, dry air in place. But as we head towards Saturday, you can see that clipper, another disturbance moving into the Northern Plains. Now let's uh, fast forward into the day on uh, Monday in a second here, but we'll get Saturday's wind chills Look at that 50 degrees below average, or uh, zero up here in Canada. And then we got temperatures 5 to 20 degrees below zero in the northern third of the United States, particularly the northern plains into the Midwest. It's going to take a while for that cold air to get into the southeastern and eastern United States, that really, that really, really cold air. It's going to require that polar vortex to move south. We'll go over that in a second. But the northern U.S. is going to be benefit, uh, to not benefiting, but experiencing the Arctic outbreak here pretty, pretty strong early on. Here's Monday. 
Uh, I would expect another system to kind of develop behind this next one and eventually another clipper to develop early next week, and that'll be our third punch. But uh, kind of flat flow, so it's going to be cool across much of the United States. Uh, but another surge is coming, I think, early next week, maybe after Monday. You can see the flat uh, below average temperatures here across the northern two-thirds of the United States with that max still kind of hanging out in the northern plains, 20 to 30 degrees uh, below average. On wind chills on Monday morning, we'll take a look at those. Or, uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the wind chills. Look at that, 50, 60 to below zero up here in Canada. In my experience, it seems like the models will overestimate the wind chills just a little bit around that five to seven day range. But Canada, really, really cold. Wind chills below zero for much of the northern two-thirds of the United States. Now look at uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin and, and, and uh, North Dakota. We could be dealing with 20 to 30, maybe even 40 to go degree below wind chills this weekend into early next week. In terms of systems, another little system here on Monday and early next week in the, the Montana, the Rockies, Northern Plains. And uh, as we head towards uh, Wednesday here, I, this, uh, this is where the polar vortex is going to move in. So you see that ridging all the way up north? It's actually almost warmer up there. In the center of the cold air mass, that's your little vortex, is rotating right around Wisconsin and right there. So that's where your like coldest air mass is. Okay, it's rotating right there. And that's kind of your vortex. But look at that. That's center right over northern Wisconsin. So the, the track of this is going to move from Canada into the northern plains, into Wisconsin, and eventually probably into Michigan and the northeastern United States or just north of there. But around that vortex, that's where your coldest air is going to be, just really all around it, but especially in the middle and just to the west of it. So we'll look at the uh, temperatures now. And how does that look at the surface? Look at that. See how matched up that is? There's the temperature anomalies for Wednesday. Wow. We're talking 20 to 40 degrees below average out here in Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Northern Plains, and as much as 5 to 10 degrees below average east of the Rockies across most all the United States except for Florida and the Southeast. Now notice this also. The something that's going to happen here is something called cold air damming. These are the mountains out here. The mountains are kind of trapping the cold air. So the cold air is getting trapped by the mountains and it's it's coming south with that friction on land. The land is it's really smooth and flat. That cold air likes to sit at the surface. It slides to the south really fast, but those mountains are kind of trapping that air. So the mountains is kind of protecting some people out there. But you also get some ridging too that's uh, keeping things warm, but kind of a cool effect there for all the, the weather geeks out there. And uh, look at the snow map. Pretty similar. Hasn't changed much. Again, a little bit extra snow out there in the northern plains. Uh, as we head towards Tuesday, this is something we're going to want to watch. Anytime we get a clipper and a coastal system to develop, there could be the potential for a northeastern, uh, nor'easter with this type of pattern. But like I said, with these Arctic outbreaks, typically these are more progressive systems and uh, the nor'easters especially if it gets really cold in the northeastern United States, they typically are off coast. So that's what I'm forecasting right now. I think most of the activity is going to be off the coast, but we'll have to watch this. At least a couple of uh, clipper systems that uh, become little disturbances in the northeastern United States with a couple of few inches possible. But again, early next week, mid next week, it's definitely something we're going to have to watch out here. Uh, will that develop into a bigger storm? Right now I'm forecasting that to be more progressive, but we'll have to watch that. Here's the wind chills on Wednesday. Very, very cold. Look at the, the wind chills here. 30, 40 degrees below zero around that polar vortex. So very cold air up in the Midwest, South, Southern Canada, even the Northeastern United States, and up into the Northern Plains, where again, below zero, even 30, maybe even more than that in the Northern Midwest. So that is where your polar air mass is. Some of the coldest air of the season is coming next week. Look at that freezing all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. As we head towards Friday next week, this is the last day we're going to look at, that ridging really starting to move in now, and that cold air will finally get shunted all the way down to the Gulf. So it's going to take a while again to the, get to the, the Gulf. It's going to hang around northern U.S. for a while, but eventually the Gulf will experience it, but I don't think that's going to happen until mid-late next week. Look at that, the temperature anomalies across much of the southeastern U.S., 10 to 20 degrees below average. 
Um, there could be some precipitation, but it's going to be off the coast. So when you get that, again, that polar air mass, it's going to dry up things and the moisture will be south of that area. So that'll, that'll squash the moisture for some time period. But look at that high, that really deep high, that vortex of cold air just sitting out there. And that's the surface high, so that's a little bit different, but very, very cold air just sitting right in the middle of the United States. And there's your wind chills for Friday morning. 30 degrees below zero in the Midwest, Central Plains, all the way down potentially to Kentucky below zero, maybe even Tennessee. Now, this is far out. Things will change the timing of this, the track and stuff. But the signal is certainly there for a powerful winter Arctic outbreak. Clippers, the main concern for the Northern Plains, a potential coastal storm. We'll have to watch that for the northeastern United States. A little more rain and precipitation here in the far south and eastern United States. Warmer than average temperatures in, in California. And it, the cold air mass is going to max out in Iowa, Nebraska, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Montana. That's where I think the coldest of the air is going to uh, ride in terms of frequency and intensity. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be making more videos. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll be making more videos every day. And uh, share this with a friend. We'll see you soon.